and he has to block his sky cat with it. Got him. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Game. Today, we're playing Mono Green in Corset 2021. We went undefeated today, going five in a row in Diamond Rank. So this is a very powerful archetype in the new meta. As always, if you find any value within this video, give me a thumbs up, share it to a friend, and we will be talking about the deck list in its entirety, followed by the strategy and synergy. So we're gonna break down each individual card and then look at how all of the individual cards work together. And then we will look at our gameplay footage for the day where we're gonna talk about the different play lines and uh, interactions within the new meta so you know how to beat the different decks that are out there with this deck. Finally, we're coming full circle with my closing thoughts where we're gonna talk about uh, how we could have changed the deck a little bit maybe, what we thought of it, and then what we have planned for the future. So, as always, if you find any value within this video, thumbs up, share to a friend, let's get into it. Starting out with our one drops of Mono Green in M21, we have four copies of Pelt Collector. This is a 1-1. One, one. Whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then as long as Pelt Collector has three or more, plus one plus one counters on it it also will have trample four copies of the ozolith legendary artifact whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield if it had counters on it put those counters on the ozolith at the beginning of combat on your turn if the ozolith has counters on it you may move all of the counters from the ozolith onto target creature four copies of storm coil serpent a zero zero with reach and trample protection from multicolored However, it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, costing X to cast. So this is really nice. It can fill our mana curve wherever we need it to go. Wildwood Scourge, another zero zero. Wildwood Scourge enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on another non-hydro creature you control, put an additional plus one plus one counter on Wildwood Scourger. So it costs a little bit more than the Serpent, but you get that additional effect. On to our true drops, we have two copies of Heroic Intervention. Permanent you control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Four copies of Scavenging Ooze, a 2-2 with the ability to pay one force and exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Scavenging Ooze, uh, or, and you gain one life. <laughs> a single copy of Voracious Hydra. This is a 0-1 with Trample. It enters with X plus one plus one counters on it. And when Voracious Hydra enters the battlefield, choose one, double the number of plus one plus one counters that were chosen, or it fights target creature you don't control. So that's pretty cool. Of course, we also have two copies of Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig, another 0-0. He, however, enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters. And whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's, put an additional plus one plus one counter on Yorvo. On to our four drops, we have two copies of Garrick Unleashed. This is our first legendary planeswalker coming in with four loyalty plus one. Up to one target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample until end of turn. Plus, or sorry, minus two. Create a three three green beast creature token. Then if your opponent controls more creatures than you, Put a loyalty counter on Garrick, so the count happens after the 3-3 hits the battlefield, and then it will be like a minus 1 instead of minus 2 if he has more creatures than you. Minus 7, you get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step. You may search your library for a creature card, put it into the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. That's absolutely incredible. Four copies of Questing Beast, a 4-4 Vigilance Death Touch Haste. Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that that player controls. Two copies of Vivian Arcbow Ranger, another legendary Planeswalker also coming in with four loyalty, plus one, distribute two plus one plus one counters on among up to two target creatures. They gain trample until end of turn. Minus three, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or Planeswalker. And minus five, you may choose target creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it and put it into your hand. Finally, we have two copies of Nissa Who Shakes the World, 
another legendary planeswalker this time coming in with five loyalty static ability whenever you tap a forest for mana and an additional forest plus one put three plus one plus one counters on up to one target non-creature land you control untap it it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste that is still a land minus eight you get an emblem with land you control have indestructible search your library for any number of forest cards put them into the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library these spells are also accompanied by one copy of the great henge a nine drop legendary artifact this spell costs x less to cast where x is the greatest power among creatures you control we can tap it to add two force and gain two life and whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card we have three copies of castle garen brig it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control forest tap it to add a force tap it for five to add six mana to cast creature spells or activate creature abilities which is interesting so it's like an additional mana there sometimes for you and 21 forest so 24 land total we do have a sideboard that we should mention three shadow spears two heroic conventions two thrashing brontodons a single gem razor three shifting ceratops and four primal mites we were playing best of one today personally but i did design a quick sideboard for those of you looking to play that way because sometimes it is just a little bit more consistent right and we have the life gain if we do need it against an aggro deck we have more protection if we need it against removal we have thrashing brontodon for wilderness reclamation uh, we have gem razor for that exact same reason we have shifting ceratops in case it's a control deck and then primal might if it's uh maybe a mid-range deck like something uh gruel based perhaps that we need to beat down so that's the sideboard that's the quick sideboard guide that's the deck and that is uh moving us in now to the deck strategy portion where we talk about how all of these cards interact together it's not much of a ramp deck we flirted with the idea of adding ramp to the deck but it just doesn't hit is the thing you are really then relying on your nissa you're relying on a turn three questing beast that can't be answered so this way we have a more consistent draw that's going to be creature 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 um in a few matches today it was land 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 but it actually worked out for us in the long run so talking first about our opening hand i like to ride my mana curve always so this means three land in hand is ideal and then we have a one drop a two drop a three drop and a four drop that's our perfect draw hand almost 100 percent of the time in almost any deck we play right there are exceptions to this for maybe aggro decks and control decks that venture to the two opposite sides of the spectrum in my case i love putting a pelt collector out first so that's i like really seeing that in my draw hand a stone cold serpent i also really like because how we mentioned earlier the x cost can be filled it can be used as a one drop it can be used as a two drop a three drop a four drop right so this is a very nice filler card in your hand because it can um like poker if like you were trying to get a flush this would be that would be a, a wild card if you will so that's nice scavenging ooze is our favorite two drop because it will click up our pelt collector and then we have control of our opponent's graveyard so if he's going to drop an earl right away to try to ramp boom that what there is bye bye earl right um so scavenging ooze just does a ton of work in the meta that's my favorite two drop to hit obviously heroic intervention is nice but it's not something we need until turn four or turn five right where we're trying to protect all of our permanents so definitely scavenging ooze gets my nod as a two drop as our three drop we have your vote lord of garen big or our stone coil serpent or our wildwood scourge or our voracious hydra or potentially we do go in with our pal collector or savaging ooze at this point we also want to look at putting our ozlith in play with spare mana so we want to try to sneak that into play as well and then four drops questing beast if we need a defender and he can't deal with it if there's no field presence i really like to put one of our planeswalkers out and just start plussing them because then we're spreading our value so if he does a field wipe our uh, planeswalkers will still survive so he's got to deal with two different kinds of threats um so there's very few cards that do that like casualties of war can target a creature and a planeswalker at the same time so but that's rare to see that right um yeah so play the planeswalkers vivian has very high synergy with the ozolith and our plus one plus one counter strategy so that's nice whereas garrick just has the minus seven ability or the minus two that's really nice 
Um, and that plus three, plus three trample doesn't really hurt either. Nissa, obviously, the plus one, plus one counters also sync with the Ozlith, which is really nice. So if he does start destroying your land that you bring out on the battlefield, it's not a total waste. You're still going to receive those counters to the Ozolith. And then we play those counters uh, maybe on another land because it has haste or preferably a creature with trample, which is our serpent, our Pell collector, our hydra, right? Um, and then anything that gets touched by our Vivian or our Garrick as well. So it could even be potentially our, our questing beast and our ooze or Yorvo as well. The great henge is the cherry on top. This is going to make sure you win the game. It's a life gain engine. It's a token generation engine and a draw engine all in one. And it should be relatively cheap to play because Yorvo comes in as a 4-4 um, and then just gets bigger from there, right? We talked about the sideboard and how you're going to use it. So that is the general deck strategy uh, for green snoppy, mono green uh, in M21. A few reminders before we get into today's gameplay footage. I'm live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. And then uh, we also have daily premieres on YouTube where we showcase our latest content live. So you can chat with me and our community there real time as well. And then we also have the Discord, probably about 11 to 1200 members now, all beginner or all expert levels from beginners to like the top rank mythic players. Lots of money in our giveaways and competitions. So don't miss out if you're trying to grow your arena collection. It's not only a great community, but it's a great place to hang out and benefit uh, or have your collection benefit as well. So thanks for watching you guys. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified of our future uploads. Share to a friend and then come back and do it all tomorrow with us to help us grow. Okay, so that's it. Today's gameplay footage, Mono Green in Corset 2021. Enjoy. We go first, that's always nice. And we start with an Ozolith. Even better. Hopefully no Teferi. It's probably all we'll see today, playing Mono Green. We have uh, a little bit of haste going on. So we should be okay. Let's get our Scourger out next. Trying to draw that fourth land for our Garrick. So if he kills the uh, Wildwood, token goes to the Ozolith. Right, that's okay. There's our land. Serpent comes out for the three. Goes to four here. No haste, which is a bummer, but we do have protection from multicolored, which might shut down a little bit of Orja of removal. In case he has Shatter the Sky. No matter let's the just plane, plus our Garrick our up. Way. Hit for seven. That's pretty feisty, let's be honest. Now he's going to spend his whole turn dealing with Garrick instead of the Serpent. Uh-oh. Smells like Ugin. One, two, three, four, five. We get the extra mana here.
Our serpent organically has trample. But if it didn't, Garrick would also give it trample. Ugin costs quite a bit is the only thing, right? Eight, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's getting quite close, but we do have lethal next turn. He gets to hit us with a shatter. All our tokens go to the Ozolith. Good game. We go first again. That's just the best luck. No one drop here. We do have our ooze for two. Or maybe we go Hydra for two? I don't know. Probably ooze for two. Because Hydra can be played for four. Interesting. You know we gotta do it. It looks like probably Teferi on board state um, opposed to us. So that's not good, but... Okay, no, Sailor, that's different. Unique for sure. That's all right. Three two twos. Let's push them all up with our Yarvo. Skycat, that's fine. So, we might actually want to... Oh no, it only come up with two. We definitely have to go Yorbo. And honestly, I don't mind killing the Sky Cat trading with the Ooze. He just takes it. Down to 10. Trying to pull a land to drop our Garrick. Sailor, that's okay. Oh, another Sailor. Nice. Does he have a Healer Hawk? Oh, lordy. <laughs> Lordy, lordy, lordy. It should get an additional one from Yorvo, right? Perfect. I say we go all in. Let's just clear the field, and that will bring the power of the Skycat Sovereign down, which is great. I mean, it would be nice to have our Ozolith in play, so we're kind of sneaking these counters away from this Pell Collector, but it is what it is. Down to three. Oh, up to four, because Healer Hawk died. But it's off the field, which is really nice. Oh no, to right fizzles. On, Bounces the pelt collector. Interesting. Another healer hawk, that's not good. Oh man, I wish we had that land. Yorvo and our Wildwood Scourge do really well together. And then our Ooze can take the Healer Hawk, and that will help our Scourge again. He has to block, is the thing. And I doubt he trades the Sky Cat with our Scourge. Yeah, just chillin'. What a guy. So if we can survive this turn, might be a bad idea. it might be okay. We need to pull that lands. Oh no, it's a fairy. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Disgusting. Trust me, I have a plan. We get the counters to our Ozolith at least, which is really nice. That can go on our Pelt Collector. Give it trample. Oh yeah, and here's the land. And he has to block his Sky Cat with it. Sky 
Got him. Nice. We are killing it with this green deck today. All right, our opponent goes first. We have four land, one drop, two drop, four drop. Let's make it work. Hopefully there's no removal here. Grazer, is it a mutate deck, question mark? Or just straight, straight up Ugin ramp? Grazer's so good. Right? Oh, it's definitely mutate. And so I, I really like this. It's like a uh, a boreal grazer into a gem razor. Neat. So we're getting smashed. That's without question. I guess we could double block it. Look at all this land. Oh no, we needed it to come in this too. What was I thinking? Oof. No blocks. This match is uh, over. Oh my lord. Now we're opening our mail accidentally because we clicked off. Come on. It's like got the notification window there. There we go. I guess we may as well hit. I don't know. Land. That'd be the last time you attack. You hear? Oh my lord. So we're keeping pace at least, right? He's still a few away from Sterex, but like we've got nothing. We need to top deck. Pure miracles. Let's set our stop on our upkeep so we can do a like a creature visualization. Uh, maybe a Nyssa or Planeswalker visualization here. Uh, one, two, three, four. We drop five for Nyssa, so that's perfect. Hmm. I kind of like Nyssa. But does she work best right here? Maybe a Yorvo? I don't know. Or, um... Hmm. A creature in general. Oh no, Shore Shark. That's our worst nightmare. That's probably game. He still can't attack, at least. Yeah, I have no problem with this. Getting rid of his Mutate stack. He's down to two cards in hand. That might be what saves us. Oh my lord. Ridiculous. Paradise Druid cannot attack. And it cannot block. It's just a dead mana here. Which card to play next? See? Okay, Poliwag lessens the cost so he can still drop for four. As long as it's a creature with mutate. He can't block. He's down to four. Shore Shark doesn't really save him because Questing Beast has haste. So we can get through relatively easy. A few more forests and we'll have won the game. We call this deck uh, Tree Planting. Okay, so this could be the beginning of the end. Um, Paradise Druid has been tapped though, so he's not... Blocking with the Sterics, it's only a stack of one. It's a land. Good game. Oops. We've been blessed. We go first. A one, a two, a three, a four drop. Three land in pocket two. All we need to draw is one land. Statistically, it would be an anomaly for us not to do it. However, after last match... Maybe that anomaly needs to be rebalanced and we'll never pull land again. 
Ooh, two oozes. That's fun, too. Don't shoot there. I can't believe he doesn't bounce the pelt collector. That just seems strange to me. Maybe he bounces it now. Ooh. I'll take my hand off the trigger. We get a lot of complaints about my nervous clicking. Fighting through his counters with double drops. He can only get one of them this way. Oh, bounces the Pelt Collector. Alright, really flexing his deck here on us. Mono Blue is a pain to play, you guys. Let's replay it. Player Ozolith. Really? Let's attack and we're going to XL our Yorvo. Now it's going to force his bounce on this ooze. Yeah, okay. And we can exile Yorvo on the stack before it's actually gone because it's still in our graveyard. It's just been targeted. So we kind of faked him out with which unsummon he used there. Which makes me smile. I think we're still going to lose this game, but it's really nice to see that uh, we we're able to make that work. And why not just pick this quench out, right? I don't know. Let's just keep his graveyard empty for some reason. The Brazen Borrower can only block creatures with flying, so it's not really a blocking threat to us. It, it's more of an aggro ordeal. Does he have a counter spell? Big time. We do hit for four and he's only hitting us. Okay, so is he going to trade with the Pell Collector? I doubt it. He wants to keep that as a draw engine. Oof. This is a, a block I would not participate in. Why not just drain his graveyard? Let's get that Sailor. Oops. And let's get these on summons, I guess. They're annoying. So it comes down to us needing him to be out of counter spells right here. Let's drop it like it's hot. Does he have one left? It's his last, if he does. Nope. I hope you're ready to fight for your life. 
We don't have our heroic intervention up to protect it if he has a block like or a bounce. Ooh, hitting for 10. It goes through down to 3. Let's just drain our mana for fun. Lowering his graveyard of instances and sorceries. That used to be a thing. Uh, is Termander still in standard? Oh, Shark Typhoon. Interesting. Our ooze does have Trample, though. Uh, I guess it won't because Garrick will die. But he's tapped and we hit for four, so this doesn't make sense entirely. Let us untap, let us untap, let us untap. Okay, we win. We're untapped. We have our Heroic Intervention available. Which means he ain't doing shit unless he's got two of them. Right? And then he can cast on top of ours. Well, that can just block us. That's kind of annoying. Urgh. Where's our trample? Clutch block. He should uh, use its ability to draw a card. I thought we had him. I thought we had him. He hits us for seven, we need to keep in mind. And he's getting the ability to... Oh, don't you dare. Brazen Borework can no longer attack now. He wanted to flash it in. And now he can't draw either. And we get to remove not one, but two creatures from the grave. Plays on thank you. We're going to leave this two mana up and pretend like we have another heroic intervention chilling. We don't. He can draw a card here, but down to just two mana. And one's a land. He can attack with a borrower. He may as well. It can't defend. And he needs to defend with a shark. Okay. Really flexing on his bad top decks. We need to never pull a lands again. Why not pull out this uh, Typhoon? They only cost one, so it's like we still would have enough mana to hold up. Do we have creatures in the graveyard? Ah, oh, we have a Pelt Collector. I forgot all about our own graveyard. There we go. Right is rain and turn. If he does deal with us, we still have our Ozlith in play. Good game. Four in a row. Monocreen undefeated in Diamond right now. Woof. I don't think it's a great hand, but we do have a substantial amount of land in the deck. Running 24, so I think it's no issue to keep two as we've seen in the past. Golgari has access to removal, which isn't really good. We pull Pelt Collector, which is really good, though. That gets us out of playing our Stone Coil so early. We'll push uh, probably our Ooze next. Yeah. We really need to draw that land, is the thing. I don't mind taking his ramp away from him. Um, it looks like it probably is a, a mutate deck, right? An untapped Paradise Druid that they don't want to really part with. Tapped land is just good for us, though. 
But this is definitely salt I mutate. I can feel it in my bones. He's tapped his druid, which is interesting. It's not really worth it for us to trade so early, and wow, we cannot get a break. It's kind of like a uh, turn off, but get it? Ha! <laughs> It's like a turn off. Um, yeah, not pulling land is not fun, and that is a turn off. At least we have a scourger, and then like maybe we. Are you joking me? Who runs land destruction? And then it's the one time that we lock on land. Oh my lord. You better watch out! We're coming for ya! Got the Ozleth baby hidden for five, down to nine! <laughs> watch him destroy our last land. This is gonna be incredible. You don't just run one land destruction card, you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. We definitely need to draw only land. I don't know how this works. There's no way. Well, maybe. I don't know. The Scry 2 is good, but 4 for destroy land is a lot. Except in this situation where it worked absolutely perfectly. Maybe he didn't top deck what he wanted? He has the win here, I'm pretty sure. If he just plays it out. Oh no, 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 no! This has been uh, a theme. Not the chair uh, material, but uh, the connection issues, right? And then not really knowing that we've been dropped, trying to load back in. I think we do have a couple of timeouts that should save us, though. So, uh, we should just be roping accidentally. And it, yeah, timeout used. <laughs> At least they're there, right? So that's always uh, encouragement to play quickly. Uh, no, no, we're good, we're good. We, we gotta land. We gotta land, we gotta land. Um... That pushes our Scourger up to two. And it's like we get to smash in pretty good. He played an Uro, it looks like. That's not good. Right? Um, probably trading with the Druid? No. Back down to six. Interesting. All right, some people are saying that I've been advertising chair fabric, and that was uh, just a low-key way of introducing it to you guys. I don't know. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Have we already disconnected? Don't do this to us. This is the fear that uh, becomes of it. Is like, what happens? Okay, he's here. All is well. Let's relax. He only has five. Uh, don't worry. Casualties of War isn't till next turn. Down to six, though, and we do have Lethal on the board. Krasis for two. We need some sort of uh, shenanigans here. Right? Like, if I could pull removal that we don't have for two. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm.
The Serpent has protection from multicolored. Both will put a token on our Scourger. He's Uro for us to exile, which we need to do. Let's hit. Hopefully he blocks our scavenging ooze. Right, so we get the kill there. That's awesome, and it survives. We could Heroic Intervention because he doesn't have enough cards in the graveyard to keep everybody alive. I think that's the play. Right, because we'll have spent our mana so we can't use it next turn anyways. He really needs... Okay, so if he does it this way, we will... Do we just take it? and then keep our heroic intervention open so we survive the casualty of war, question mark. I think we just take it. I think we just trade and we hold up our intervention to save us from casualty of war. Oh, no, now he's doing it. Shenanigans, 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 shenanigans. Uh, that's two, it'll go to four. Oh no. Right choice, wrong choice. Let's see how it turns out for us this turn. We cleared his board. He'll have to drop a land and then do it to us. Good game. Ooh, undefeated, boys. Five in a row. We went right through Diamond Tier 4 without even losing a match. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, though. <laughs> hey! Mono Green M21 is a powerhouse uh, undefeated, we tried to lose games with land and we couldn't even do it, right? Um, I'm really liking it. It seems to be very consistent. I absolutely love the fact that Ozolith insulates us from field wipes, so they do need to both wipe our creatures and deal with Ozolith. Then we've incorporated the Planeswalkers, so now they've got three forms of threat on the field that they have to all deal with, so there's very few ways to do that. And if they do do that, we've got protection from it, right? which green was missing. I think green is in a very good place right now. It seems to always be, um, not super recently, but when Veil of Summer was around at least. Um, so this is kind of like our new Veil of Summer, just to protect us. He hits us with a field wipe, nope. He hits us with a field wipe, sure it hits, right? Um, so there's a lot of cool things. Even the fact that we could offset a Teferi minus. If we have a rigged Ozolith and a creature with Trample, and he's like, well, I gotta get rid of the Ozolith because questing beasts or like whatever um it's just good so spreading your threat i think is always a really great strategy between planeswalkers artifacts and creatures just so a single field wipe doesn't shut down your entire game plan um and all of your permanents on the field ugin's minus ability still does this and is still fire and you still need to watch out for it but hopefully you're able to beat them to the punch all right, you guys, it's been a pleasure. This was Mono Green in M21. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share to a friend. Hit the bell icon so you can come back to do it tomorrow. We're live on Twitch every single day. YouTube premieres every single day live. Come say hello. And then we have the Discord where I'm also in all day every single day. So it's a, it's a lot of magic, right? Thank you guys for all your support, your continued time and attention. And those of you who are supporting me financially now, thank you so much. I'm really looking to pump it up for the year. Take care, and we'll see you all tomorrow with Orzhov Vito. What?